Hey everyone, my name is Carrie, and I'm a senior brand evangelist here at Helium 10. I'm here with Kian, and I know many of you know him already because he's really well known in the sourcing world. So I'm so excited to have you here. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. It's great to be here and uh, be in these fantastic Helium 10 offices. Yeah, we're excited to have you here. I've, there's a lot of people here really excited that he's here actually. So I wanted to ask a few questions about sourcing. I know it's probably one of the most challenging parts of the whole selling on Amazon process and really the most important one. So I wanted to start off with a few questions about because we're in October, the Canton Fair is coming and I have actually been to the Canton Fair live and I, I thought it was the best way to source products because you get to talk to them, you get to, you know, they're all kind of next to each other. You can kind of, uh, you know, get a really good price because you're like, oh, hey, this person's going to give me this price and it's just kind of a more live and interactive thing. So can you tell us what the Canton Fair looks like? maybe this year and maybe what you think the future holds for the Canton Fair. For sure, yeah. yeah. And the, for anyone who's not been to the Canton Fair before, it's essentially the biggest import-export fair in the world. There's over 26,000 exhibitors there, over three phases, every single category of product you can imagine. And to your point, why it's like really good is that like you can go there and really like fast track your sourcing, meaning like, okay, like if you go online, you order a sample, you get there, oh, this is not what I wanted, right? Here's the changes, write it by email, right? They read it two days later, right? Now to make the new sample, you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But when you're there in the Canton, on fair you can see these things in like real life to be like all right that's exactly who i wanted or can you tweak this can you add waterproof coating cool and you're actually putting in like face-to-face -face communication with them as well so not only are you learning about the products negotiating the price seeing all these other samples in front of you there as well but you're building those relationships as well so you know exactly like who you're working with who you're doing business with and essentially at the end of the canton fair whether you stay in china you can go and visit that factory or once you go home you're like well i know exactly who i'm working with i've negotiated my price and i've got my sample that i'm taking home with me as well so literally like in one week you've done what we maybe have done like two or three months worth of work like had you just done it from home but on October 15th is the real online Canton Fair since we're still not able to go back to China at the moment mm -hmm. and on the online Canton Fair they basically try to recreate that uh, real exhibition but online the user interface isn't the most like user friendly so you do need to yeah. sort of like work around <laughs> it but that's the hard part th there are some really good opportunities of using the online fair meaning like there's the Canton Fair awards section so there's like all the product innovations of new suppliers because the the fair would go on twice a year and what I really used the fair for was seeing what was new mm -hmm. right and the suppliers wouldn't have their brand new products like front and center to be like right here's our new products because their competitor suppliers are right next to them and then also there's a lot of customers which don't actually buy from them would see that but if you you build up a good relationship with factory just like talking to them there and then or if it's someone you've worked with before you're like hey what are you guys working on for next year and they're like they'll go into the back open up this little cupboard bring out this black bag and be like all right here's our new product cool and that could essentially be the next product that you launch but on the online fair they have the award section and not a lot of people really know about this I just really know from being at the fair itself but you can like scroll down go to the CF awards they'll play some like dodgy music you go down the little hallway it's like a Google map that you just click and move forward it's like a little game basically and they have like all these products there and you can click on it it'll tell you who the supplier is why they want an award what the new features are and it's the most random stuff from like a new toothbrush to like a microwave to a surfboard to this new like waterproof jacket just random stuff and I think like you can utilize the helium 10 tools to see like okay are people selling this are people searching for this how many reviews has it got all right cool that's a product that's a supplier let's get a sample so you can really utilize like product innovations from the Canton Fair and use the live chat as well so like they have these like all these live demos of all the new products that they're working on and that's great because you can put in face-to-face -face time with them even though it's just online but you can also see like you know how good is their English how good are they at communicating what new stuff have they been working on and really forge relationships that way and it's just I treat it like a game like you literally just use this website and just sort of meet new people find out about new products new categories and just navigate the maze um, but definitely check it out I think it's going on for like uh, a week it'll be from the 15th of October to like maybe the 22nd uh, cantonfair.org and uh, it'll be a lot of fun. I think what I also liked a lot about it was all the packaging because I was able to kind of get ideas for packaging and how to present my product, but then I also saved a ton of money. So there's a lot of really good things about it. But um, I think going on kind of the packaging, maybe let's go on to the next topic, which is like sustainability, because mm -hmm. I really think that Amazon and Walmart are really focusing on sustainable products. And I really do believe they're going to start giving them more of a boost. They already kind of have. There's little tags that you can have. So 
can you just talk a little bit more about sustainability and sourcing and what you think the future holds for that and, and sellers in general? Sure, so I, I think like sustainability is vitally important and I can tell you that like uh, being at a few different trade shows for like categories of product like the outdoor industry, they're treating sustainability for the utmost importance and it used to be like, all right, this product comes from like recycled materials, but like we didn't know what percentage, what type of recycled materials, whether it actually was recycled, we didn't have any certificates. And what the big brands are really focusing on is like full transparency. And with sustainability, it can be in your product, it can be in your packaging, it can be in the delivery of your product, it can be like how your products are manufactured by your factory. So you can contact your manufacturer and say like, hey, um, how do you guys, what's your energy source for your factory? And they're like, oh, we use solar power, uh, solar power. we use like wind turbines and all that. Like, oh great, cool, can I get a photo? And that photo now goes on your website, sustainability tab, uh, hello at sustainability.com, whatever your brand name is. And then now you have like a sustainability channel on your website. But it's so, so important to like find out if they have any sustainability measures, do they have any certifications that they use in terms of is it recycled material, organic material, uh, sustainable material. And it's, if they don't have it already, it doesn't mean they're not capable of doing it because let's say you're doing like this garment or a backpack or whatever, or a sleeping bag, they go to their material factory to order that polyester, but they can also equally order recycled polyester as well. So now you can basically find, uh, have these sustainable materials in your products. But a lot of people assume, well, okay, if I use recycled polyester, then it's going to be way more expensive than the, my actual product cost. But in actual fact, the functionality of recycled polyester is the exact same as real polyester. Maybe the recycled polyester is 10% more expensive on the material cost, but that's only on the material cost because like there's a lot of cut and sew and the main cost of a product is actually like the labor cost depending on what the product is. So if the sustainable materials are 10% more expensive, the actual overall product cost is maybe only three or 4% more expensive. So it's actually not that much of a price increase, but you have a lot more added value. You have certifications, you have differentiation from your competition. And then the likes of companies like Amazon and Walmart will reward you for being a sustainable company. Uh, and you can actually search by sustainable brands as well. So it's definitely an important investment to make uh, in your company, whether it be in your product, your packaging, your delivery, or in that way your manufacturers actually make the goods as well. And it seems like you could probably you know, sell it at a higher price because of the sustainability product, because people want to make sure that they're, you know, buying things that are sustainable and they're not making a lot of waste. Is that? That's actually such a good point because um, people always ask, well, should I sell a sustainable product for a little bit more or should I continue to sell this product at a cheaper price? And the answer is you can do both because like if you go on a Nike website and like, so I like, we call it football, you guys call it soccer. Uh, you can buy the shirt of your favorite soccer team and let's say for example it's eighty dollars for the normal jersey but then it's a hundred dollars for the sustainable one so you decide which one you want to buy and you can buy the shirt which is made from uh, plastic bottles but it's twenty dollars more expensive i would personally rather buy that but someone might want to buy the eighty dollar version so it's not like you have to choose one or the other you can do your normal product and you can do the sustainable version of that product as well that's a really good point um, and I also like that how you mentioned that Walmart and Amazon, you know, how they're you know, kind of boosting your product with the sustainability tags. Um, I also am kind of interested to know where Walmart's going to take this because we have this thing called, or Walmart has this thing called Open Call, where once a year you can go and present your products to Walmart. You can you fly to Arkansas and you present in front of buyers. And this last year they wanted made in the USA. And I'm wondering if in the, in the coming years they're going to be wanting sustainable products or that's going to be like your main ticket to entry is they're looking for sustainability. So I'm not, I'm not just saying, I'm not saying that's what, what's going to happen, but I imagine that's kind of the direction they're going. You can see a lot of their literature that they've written in, in their corporate literature about sustainability. It's really important um, for Walmart too. So um, I would say just, you know, getting these things squared away now will really set you up for success with just the direction that all of these platforms are going. For sure. And, and to your point, I think there's just far more upside than there is downside to being more sustainable. One, it's better for the environment. It creates more brand loyalty. It more aligns with your brand's like core values if like eco-friendly sustainability uh, is part of that as well. And you're also not losing out on anything because you're giving your customers a choice which one they want to purchase as well and I think that in when you look at marketplaces like Walmart and Amazon where you might be like this is so competitive where do I differentiate well this is a key aspect of where you can differentiate and the platforms will reward you for that if you don't want to change your products right you might want to change your packaging so if you do your products in like a color box right that color box was a brown box and they've used like a, a printing film on top of that right but now you can change it not just like a brown box because people might feel that cheapens the product but you can ask for what's called like a 1c box which is a one color box so let's say for example like your brand product is like a light purple or a lime green just a random color right you can now have a brown box but just print like that lime green 
color instructions on your product, but that packet, that box can still be recycled because it's just that one color. It doesn't have that film on it. So, and then also massively bring down your product packaging cost down as well, because a color box might cost you $2.50, but a 1C box will cost you like 75 cents. But the consumer didn't feel like they got a cheap product and that box is now recyclable and then it adds more value to your customer as well. And I think you could probably find places you can get that created in the Canton Fair. So. I mean, they have so much packaging. When I went there, I was like, this is amazing. For sure. So. And yeah, that's a good point as well. Like in terms of like people always ask, well, where do I go to get my packaging? Do I work for my existing supplier or do I go to like a packaging manufacturer mm -hmm. or can I find them at the Canton Fair? And I think the first port of call is always ask your manufacturer mm -hmm. what packaging options they have available because your manufacturer like makes a product, they cut and sew the materials, they assemble it, but they buy their materials from a material factory. They buy their packaging from a packaging factory. Uh, they have their own freight forwarders for like shipping their products. So your manufacturer's got so many different relationships and if you tell your manufacturer I want sustainable materials they'll go to that material factory to get that if you said I want um, a recyclable packaging they'll they'll know which packaging company so you don't essentially have to go and find that for them they'll know those people you just need to tell them what you want but it's much easier if it's a relationship that your factory has already got someone they've already worked with someone that is nearby someone that they know already rather than you your factory maybe in one province your packaging factory being another and now you have to go and give them instructions deliver it to them and now you have to yeah. be the communication channel between the two so much easier just to ask your manufacturer yeah so you can just get the the packaging you know like okay i want a sample of this from the canton fair and then send it to your supplier and say hey can you do something like this sure. yeah that's sure. a really good point so yeah i mean all of these things are really i think gonna not only just they're just gonna boost your brand and your uh your sales even though it seems like a little bit of a hassle i really would recommend just looking into just small ways that you can uh, become more sustainable so that you can uh, stand out to your buyers and just contribute to the cause that a lot of people are really passionate about. All right, so if you wanna see more maybe Walmart content or anything like that, make sure to join my Helium 10 Winning with Walmart group because I go over a lot of this kind of information specifically for Walmart. So if that's what you're looking to do, definitely join that group or as always our Helium 10 members group if you are a Helium 10 customer as well. Now, Kian, where can, where can everyone find you? Yeah, for sure. So I've got a YouTube channel called Sourcing with Kian where I just do loads of videos on supply chain, but I've also got a very special series with Helium 10 called Straight From The Source, which will be available on the Helium 10 channel and also the Source with Kian channel. So definitely check out both, subscribe to both, and let's get into that supply chain stuff for you guys. Sounds good. Thanks everyone. Bye.